En Place Making Latinoamérica creemos que los cambios progresivos, permanentes y exitosos son posibles cuando se planifican desde los deseos y las necesidades de las personas que viven y ocupan los espacios públicos. Reactivando los espacios públicos con esta filosofía, creemos que en las ciudades post-COVID habrán comunidades más solidarias y resilientes, donde la salud y el cuidado entre personas y naciones será más fuerte que nunca. Buscamos proporcionar espacios seguros para todas y todos los peatones y que haya menos automóviles, menos tráfico peligroso y menos calles inseguras en las ciudades post-COVID, brindando lugares a las comunidades que se adapten a la nueva normalidad y les permitan recuperar sus dinámicas sociales en la vida pública de forma segura. Las ciudades post-COVID deberían ser lugares donde todas y todos podamos disfrutar nuestros lugares de forma segura con nuestros amigos, familiares y vecinos. Hello, this is Andrea Meyer, urban planner from Bucharest, and I think that in the after COVID city there will be more people in public spaces, which of course generates a new demand for quality placemaking and for opportunities to play and to interact in the public space. I also think that in the after COVID city there will be less bureaucracy. I think the pandemic period has been a great test in adaptability and in fast response for several institutions. And it would be useful and natural to capitalize on this fast track administration and digitalization that we have experienced in the last period in order to further reduce bureaucracy and to further unlock administrative practices. I also think that in the after COVID city, there should be a strong plan for people who have been severely struck by loss of jobs and by poverty. A plan with focus on, let's say, acquiring digital skills for vulnerable groups or even matchmaking between employers and possible future employees. Thank you. In the after COVID city, I think there will be greater importance and value placed on human connection. A maskless smile might make your day, or going to a rave full of sweaty bodies less than a metre apart from you dancing might be the highlight of your year. But in the after COVID city, I also think there will be more open air infrastructure for unsweaty raves, for distance concerts, for separated human beings. And there'll be more surveillance, more ID checks, more sanitation, more drinking and smoking bans, more sterilization of human connection in the first place. And in the after COVID city, I think there should be more indigenous wisdom. Indigenous wisdom that understands that infrastructure and rules alone won't solve a pandemic and they won't create a sense of place, but that we need holistic thinking and that we need human connection. And that means smiling and dancing, and yes, even sweating. In an after COVID city, people will be dancing in the streets. Folks will be out in public spaces, walking on sidewalks, using parks like you've never seen before. Because in my after COVID city, we are more thoughtful about the way we design places and more inclusive about who they're designed for. The after COVID, Valencia will be more sustainable. People demand more public spaces to make a walk. We, people demand less cars. People demand less contamination. And uh, I think that we will develop a more collectivity feeling. I think that individualism uh, linked to the neoliberalism is going to, to, to decrease in our society. I also think that people uh, are asking for more public services, especially public health uh, and uh, public education. I think that we will have a better society, but we must, uh, we must admit that some uh, um, dark forces also will have the opportunity to develop their ideology. So we have to strengthen this uh, collectivity feeling, we have to strengthen public services and we have to strengthen uh, this way to achieve a more sustainable city. COVID showed us the importance of solidarity when it comes to local care, services or even the local economy. In the after COVID city there should be much less unnecessary movement 
we should be able to spend more time in our neighborhoods helping to develop local services that we need in our everyday life. In the after COVID city, there should be also more attention to the access of public spaces and green spaces, whether you own some or not, because this has been one of the main factors of inequality during the lockdown. In this city, after the, the COVID, I really think that uh, the focus should be on uh, informal settlements and also social housing. And this, especially, of course, in uh, the context of developing countries, as my background and in Brazil. And uh, because in these places they are so vulnerable and also these people, they are most likely to be to be hit, like the first ones to be hit by this by this kind of uh, pandemic. And uh, basically because it's most likely because they lack basic sewage, uh, basic infrastructure, like access to potable water and the most crucial one, like they cannot isolate because in most of the cases you would have like family members of 10 usually living in the same uh, 50 square meters. So how can you self isolate when you have a social condition like that? So it's more deep than we think. And also, and I think that it's the first step that we should look into like in the next days. <laughs>